Okay, so welcome everyone to the second, uh, well, welcome Sean, my only welcome. guest right now, to uh, <laughs> the second installment of Living the Chess Lifestyle. Um, and today we're joined by my guest and good friend, uh, Sean Sullivan, who I met two years ago um, when I first moved to London. Uh, we were both at UCL, we met in the UCL Chess Society. Um, Sean is <clears throat> a um, recent graduate, as am I, um, at UCL, and he studied. Um, uh, you have your your master's right in the natural sciences. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Your major was physics. Your minor was inorganic chemistry. But you consider yourself a uh, particle or higher high energy physicist. So yeah, um, you, you, you can just call me a nerd if you want. Like it's fine. Much yeah, much more manageable. We're all nerds though. Uh, our viewers included, so yeah, they have nothing on you. You were pretty much the UCL Chess Society beginners rep. Like, I don't know, if, was that your official title or were you just kind of um, ended up? Last, last year, I was the beginners rep for the you society, were. yeah. I think I dragged you along to some tournaments as well. Um, Which I hated. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. First, I want to ask you the introductory question. Are people more impressed when you tell them you're a chess player or a particle physicist? Um, I don't really tell people I'm a chess player, to be honest. Um, so I probably have to say particle physicist. If I was to tell someone about chess, which I guess I've done a few times, they kind of understand chess a little bit better than particle physics for the most part. So yeah, I'm not normally, sure. normally I just get the response like, oh, you know, I, I've, I've used to play chess with my dad or something like this. Um, yeah, they try to relate it to their own experiences. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if people are impressed by either. People can't easily relate to uh, particle physicist uh, angle. <laughs> it's like my dad was a particle <laughs> physicist. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, how did you first get into chess? I know you're. I mean, pretty new to it, honestly, and your progress is is extremely impressive. You're a talented solver, um, which I we can get into later. Um, but you're pretty new to to the game in general. What fascinated you about it and why did you get into it? Um, I mean, I think like a lot of people as well, I played a little bit when I was young, but not really seriously at all. So I knew the rules and how the pieces moved. And uh, I mean, it's interesting that you bring up the, the like how fast I've progressed in your opinion, because um, <clears throat> I think there's like some studies with, you know, is, is it easier to learn chess if you know the rules as when you're young? I think I watched a Kostya video about this. Yeah. I don't know if you've uh, heard of this. So, I mean, I, I played a little bit when I was like maybe young and learned the rules, but, you know, didn't go to a tournament, didn't go to a chess club, nothing really uh, formal. And then kind of lost interest because, you know, when you're a kid, um, everything's kind of it's like oh shiny and you just jump between different interests every week and especially something like chess where there's definitely a hurdle to overcome before you really get into the the meat of the game mm. it's uh maybe hard to stay focused so i restarted chess in my second year of university so about two or three years ago somewhere in that region um i think what got me back into it was actually just uh just youtube videos i mean you know agav mater of course yep. that got suggested to me and i started watching some of his videos about it and i think um i got into chess just just around the time that it was starting to boom i mean there's had there's been this really big increase now with the queen's gambit and then pog champs just before that i was about to stroke but, your ego and say you got into chess before it became cool but i mean maybe right at but, the I think, I think it was right right at the start. I mean, there there was there's this big wave now of like with Pog Champs and with um, the Queen's Gambit, but there was also like I guess a wave with Agath Mater and those kind of YouTube chess channels growing like a lot more popular. So I think I got in on that <coughs> wave. Yeah, and as a kid, it's hard to know um, that like even if you know the rules, that there's this whole big wider chess world to actually invest yourself in, and I definitely wasn't aware of that myself. So regarding physics, um, I mean, this is a very dubious question maybe, but do you see <clears throat> any uh, of the same reasons you're drawn to chess as you are drawn to physics or science in general, the science? I think, okay, firstly, one of the things that really appeals to me about chess is that there's no luck element to that. 
Okay, well, you can argue, okay, there can be a luck element. You play something and your opponent misses something or they blunder. Yeah. But for the most part, chess is a complete information game. And the point is to make the best move every time. You can argue about that, I guess, but that's not related to science. Chess. How? Well, I'm going to just say because it's complete information, there's obviously a very logical structure to chess. There's certain principles and rules that you need to follow. So like controlling the center, you know, opening principles. So I think what they have in common really is just kind of the logical nature of the game. I don't know. It feels to me like chess is more, has more to do with like complete information than science. Science, mm -hmm. it seems like there are assumptions involved. Well, yeah, there is definitely assumptions involved in science. But what I mean more is that the complete information nature of chess lends itself to chess having a lot of logical guiding principles in it. Mm -hmm. And there are also a lot of logical guiding principles in what we do in science. True. Maybe the way so, theory evolves or like the way we understand how to um, approach strategy in chess is sort of aligned somehow with... with yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, chess is about spotting little details and trying to fully analyze positions. And science is about trying to spot little details and analyze data and trying to make models from that. That actually leads me into um, like your, and I know you're interested in um, maybe opening theory more so than, um, I don't know if it's more so than other parts of the game for you, but um, I, I mean, I think you, you have a strong suit uh, in your memory. And honestly, I just think the openings have funny names. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun to learn some exactly. new ones. Well, I mean, I don't play the funny variations because they're normally terrible. Don't lie to but... me. You <laughs> terrible shit against me. Yeah, but the terrible stuff I played against you doesn't have bad names. Okay. I mean, there's the, the whole branch of pterodactyl openings, I think, in the modern, which are pretty funny. Yeah. Um, some weird... And that's, uh, that's D4... Uh, Knight F, or no, it's not knight f6, it's uh, g6, bishop g7, and uh, taking on c3. Knight c3, bishop takes c3. Mm -hmm. yeah. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, weird stuff. Um, I mean, some of the terrible stuff I played against you is uh, like the Latvian gambit, maybe, which is atrocious. <laughs> uh, the fried liver. I mean, just weird names. But you know a lot of the theory, like the critical tactical variations pretty well. Um, you've shown me some games that you've played like in a couple of the, the leagues. Yeah, kind of, but I, I'm also forgetting a lot of things all the time. I'll learn something, know it really well, mm -hmm. and then I'll forget it <laughs> when I learn something else. Gotcha. I mean, currently what I play uh, a lot is the Evans Gambit when I get a chance, and that's very, very theoretical. That's a nice but, one. Yeah. But yeah, besides that, I, I tend to now try and push out the really bad openings, I think, because I don't want them. I don't want to get into a situation where like, oh, I remember this move. Is this supposed to be good? And then go into some horrible, horrible variation where I get checkmated. Well, I won't have you two moves. all of your repertoire. Um, I know you have other interesting talents as well that are sort of similar to like, memory like you've recited a lot of the digits of pi very very quickly to me before i, I, I can do it yeah. now if you like yeah. but i don't think i remember that many anymore oh you, you probably it's probably muscle memory let's hear it uh okay do you want to count me in maybe right. that'll confuse me with the numbers <laughs> three one four go three that's all I remember anymore. Disappointing. <laughs> yeah. It used to be a lot better. And, um, yeah, so you've got that, the puzzle solving. Uh, oh, and you're into trivia. You're really into trivia. Uh, I guess I just like learning funny <laughs> funny things. Like, I think some people just have this kind of urge to know things for no reason. Um, I just like quizzes, I guess. Mm. Yeah, you've given a couple awesome pub quizzes to the UCL Trust Society. Do you have any, like, interesting trivia questions off the top of your head that you've included? Um, in the quizzes? Or... Yeah, in the quizzes. 
Do you remember any of the ones I've told you? Like, do you remember either of the two Winter Kings who dethroned Bot Botvinnik? Wait, so the Winter Kings were given that nickname because they beat Botvinnik? They beat Botvinnik and then he beat them next year in the rematch and took back his world championship crown. So that's Smyslov, right? Yeah, that's the first one. And I think in 53, I'm not 100% on that. Tal. And Tal, yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, who's your biggest chess inspiration? And I think I already know the answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, do, you, do you want to write down the answer and we can compare? Oh, sure. I'm interested to see if you know uh, it. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty confident. Because I, I have a hunch that you might say the, the second person instead of the first oh, no. person. Oh, no. I was just thinking about this the other day. Whose favorite world champion is Max Uwe? Nobody's. Well, yeah, because he's not really that good, is he? <laughs> he was he's, like, he's, a, he's good. He's a strong player, but yeah. he, he's also one of the last non-professional, probably the last non-professional world champion, isn't he? He was a maths professor. Right. No, and he was also the uh, FIDE president for a while. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to spell this guy's name. I'll be quite honest. I might <laughs> give away who I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's probably, it. you're probably right then. I was just, uh, I was worried you might say the other guy who plays a bit like him. Okay, you ready? Okay. You, you uh, it, I'm going to show it on three. Rashid Gabatovich Nezhmedinov. Close enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it's backwards and unreadable. <laughs> to, uh, uh, it was, it was not backwards to me. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't? Oh, no. I could read it. <laughs> uh, I think it's spelled N-E-Z-H-E, no, N-E-Z-H-M-E-T-D-I-N-O-V, -E -T -T I think. Oh, oh, I think it, 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 it's a Muslim name. I think it means like Star of the Faith or something like that. Yeah, interesting guy. Um, he played Very for... interesting documentary on him. Uh, I'll link that in the description. Uh, so why do you like him so much? Oh, he's no reverse gear. Rashid, what's not to like about him? <laughs> so you're referring to his very dynamic, uh, like dubious at times. How, so how does he compare to Tall? I'd be interested to hear. Well, interestingly, he's played four games with Tall and he has a 3-1 record against him. Mm -hmm. So take it that one. Well. The Checkers champion too. He was also the Checkers champion, but he uh, he gave that up when he focused a bit too much on checkers and then got destroyed in a chess tournament. Yeah, Nezhmedinov just... It, it's the same quality as Tal with, you know, the attacks, the very, very, very wild positions, never stopping the attack. Mm -hmm. But I think Nezhmedinov also has this big, like, underdog quality to him because he was never a GM. Yeah. I don't know if he's even been posthumously made a GM. Mm -hmm. But just um, the combinations that he's played stick with you, especially the, the famous game against Polgievski, but there's many, many others. There's not a boring Nezhmedinov game. Yeah. Um, and you try to emulate his play? Well, as much as I can. I mean, I think the players like Nezhmedinov and Tal, they have a certain something that you can't replicate through study or... Yeah. You're born with it, I think. Good point. Um, so what are your chess goals, if you have any right now? Or are you focusing more so on, on the science? Uh, well, my current goal in chess is just to reach expert strength. Okay. And so, so I didn't know that uh, in the UK there was an expert sort of title. Is there an expert title or is it just... Because uh, in the I don't think... I don't know if there's a title, but I'm just uh, considering it as 2000 fee day. Okay. That's my goal right now. Because I know expert in USCF is 2000 USCF, which is like 1850 to 1900. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I mean, generally that's just the goal, yeah. but I want to get stronger at chess. That's, right. that's the point. I just want to play good but, moves, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, it'd be very nice if we could all just say, oh, I want to be grandmaster world champion one day, but we have to take it in small steps. Uh, okay. So going back to your pet peeves, and uh, over the board chess. What do you hate most about over the board chess? It's a pretty unconventional uh, chess interview question, but what do you Yeah, hate? I really hate when people play the Karakhan. It's just a sh trash opening. I know, man. Uh, <laughs> you, you can't beat it. So like, what do you do? <laughs> just cry. You play the advance and then you like do a quick, 
No, I don't play the advance anymore. You don't play the advance? Oh, you play the I used to I used to play the tile variation, but now I've switched to the two knights. Okay. So are you looking at Fisher's games in the two knights or <laughs> Nejmedino's games? <laughs> okay. Which yeah. is one of the games in the Queen's Gambit, actually. Oh really? I think it's the um oh, against uh against uh Harry? Yeah, yeah, against Beltic, yeah. exactly. I'll have to rewatch that. I haven't been playing, paying close attention to the games that were shown, but I, I heard they're all pretty uh, iconic. I haven't actually watched it at all, but I just know like which famous games have been put in there. Oh, you haven't watched it? I uh, wish I had the free time to watch TV and just do stuff besides work. Well, okay. There's got to be something else that you hate about Over the Board Chess, <laughs> besides the Kiroko. Yeah. Probably what I hate most about the tournaments I've been to is the lack of people my age to play with. I can play chess. I, I don't care that there's, you know, really old people there and really young kids, but it's just, I can't really talk with them after the game. So for me, it kind of removes one of the nice aspects about chess, which I get got the society, which is, you know, like shooting the breeze. Yeah. I've, I've had a couple of interesting experiences at tournaments after like, after the game ends, like with players who don't speak great English, it's clear they don't, but like in that moment after the game ends, I really enjoy these moments where you sit there in silence at the board and you like point at different like ideas that like could have, you do like counterfactuals. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really beautiful example of people who don't normally speak um, the same language, um, but they are able to communicate through chess. Maybe it just means I'm very antisocial. That's probably it. I mean, physicists aren't the most outgoing, are they? Yeah. That's um, the stereotype. I'm in a similar boat as a, a chess artist. What is, um, I don't know if you have access to one right now, but um, do you have one of your favorite puzzles that you could share with um, the viewer? Um, you don't have to like share your screen or anything, but just um, maybe send it to me later and I'll include it in the video and you can um, sort of give a brief uh, introduction to the puzzle. Because there's two that I'm thinking of. There's the one that I've shown you before where you play like a, uh, like king g king g6 and then you push the h pawn and then they play queen takes a and then you like lock the queen in do you know which one i'm talking about yeah i think so but now the you one. can't show that one because you just gave away the idea yeah okay that's true <laughs> maybe I, I won't describe the other one then let's just try and make this quickly oh yeah are you actually setting yeah. up a position mm -hmm. oh, okay yeah i, th I think there's a right position now we